Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Trip Chief, I'm happy the property owner. Um, I, I've got a couple of things that I'd like to do. Um, one of them is that, uh, is that uh, I'm with my partner, Jerry Daniels, who has been a long time uh, attorney for the owners. Um, and they've got a couple of things they would like me to say, which I with your permission will do um, before getting into some of the things you just discussed. Um, but I do want to point out, while I think there's a lot of interesting policy and history that you've talked about in the last little while here, where we stand right now, is that my client owns a house that does not have a historical designation on it. And so uh, it is, let's just say, a normal piece of residential property from that point of view. Um, and my client has followed the process to apply for a demolition permit, and they're entitled to receive that permit uh, based on the way the code works. Um, and um, I think there is a decent argument to be made that that entitlement has a value uh, that needs to be kept in mind uh, in this process. Um, I'm going to try to read this since I forgot to bring it with me. I'm reading it off a phone, so forgive me. It's going to take me a second. I have to blow the type up, and I can't read the whole line at once. But, uh, the, the owner says this. What is most important for preservation-minded people to know is that from the beginning, we were open to the idea of having a house relocated, and it has never been our intent to immediately crash a wrecking ball through the home upon receipt of a demolition permit. In fact, we are in contact with parties who have an interest in relocating the home, and we will look at those proposals carefully and supportively. And just uh, as an aside, I know that the owners have talked with uh, a representative of the Cayman family uh, about this issue uh, in recent days. It's correct, Jerry. Um, the, the owner also says, the goals and functions of historic preservation in our community and how those goals should be balanced against personal property rights is a healthy and important uh, debate. Um, there are appropriate means of achieving those goals and there are less appropriate means of achieving those goals when you try to balance per, uh, personal property rights. Um, and um, I think that's kind of what you're talking about here today. But once again, and I think one of you said this, um, with this particular specific piece of property, I think you're kind of past that. Uh, you can talk about policy issues and talk about the way your historic preservation code works, et cetera, but uh, we feel like we're kind of down the road from that point on this particular piece of property. Um, now, um, there's a lot we could say, but let me, let me just say this. We're authorized uh, to a certain point to, to talk about a solution here. And, and uh, my, my authority is as follows, and I think, this, I think this proposal gets you out of any uncertainty that there might be, because I hear you asking Mr. Brown uh, about you know, what, what sort of risk we put ourselves at if we try to come up with something to stop this. And I, the way I'm just sitting in the audience listening, but I, I think what I hear being discussed is some sort of ad hoc remedy that's not really laid out in the code. You don't really have a procedure to do this, but maybe you can do it, and it probably wouldn't be that risky. And well, uh, it could be. I don't know, but I do know that, that my clients have property rights, and I'm not sure how they would react to that. But here's what here's what they've said they'll do. Um, they feel they have a right to have the issuance of the demolition permit, as and as George has described, when they file the, the unplugs or whatever the, the terminology for them is, uh, and that clock starts. They're willing to voluntarily delay that for 30 days once they become entitled to the permit. They'll do that by their own agreement. So you didn't do it to them. So you shouldn't have any rem you shouldn't be concerned about being sued about that. Um, the purpose of that period of time will be to receive and consider reasonable proposals to move the house in a reasonable time. And I'm not going to be any more specific than that on those dates right now, but that's because I think it needs to be left to my client's decision as to whether or not whatever is proposed, if anything, meets with their needs. Uh, as, as they have said, and I didn't read this part, they've been 25-year uh, residents of the city. Uh, choosing to stay in the city, choosing to make what, what I am sure is going to be a very nice contribution to the city. Uh, I think one thing, as we all know, uh, that the city has been blessed with for many years is 
good stewards of its estate pieces of property and its lakefront pieces of property. We have a lot of people who have made pretty good decisions and pretty far thinking decisions about how to handle uh, those parts of this community that, made, that really contribute a lot to making it what it is. And I think you know, the, the, the current owners are in that boat too. You know, they're that kind of folks. They want to do the right thing. Um, and so they'll agree to leave this window open and uh, now that and, and they will then evaluate a proposal. Now any proposal that they would accept is going to have to be pretty definite <clears throat> and, and I'm sure they feel this way but I've been down this road before uh, when, when I sat up there with you guys. There, there, there are going to be certain fundamental things that have to be met for it to make sense and, and you know, planning things, funding things, other things that I might not be able to think of right now. Uh, I think uh, I think there will be some challenges involved in a proposal to move that particular house from that particular lot, but that's okay. Uh, our clients are willing to consider that. So if uh, what what we would ask then is that, uh, frankly, the, the commission take no action, uh, and uh, you don't need to take any action. Uh, and if you don't take any action, we'll voluntarily put that 30-day delay in place. Uh, it probably from what George is saying, that will really knock it out at least 45 days from the 13th. Tom, yeah. Trip, I have to just, I'm, I'm looking, and, and this is getting really into the weeds, but I, I, I want to get it out there. 30 days is, we, it, it, whatever solution potentially is arrived at may require an action by the commission. Don't know that, but it may. I, I would like to tie that somehow 30 days takes us out, you know, falls between two commission right. meetings or so. I mean, that's, sure. I, I hear you, so you have that kind of variance that if it, if it 30 days fell the Friday before a commission meeting that we would at least have until that Monday to, and I don't know that it would, I don't think that it would, but it, it, it may require a variance, it may require something that this group may have to act upon. Here's my answer to that. If there is a proposal received during the window that says in it, and we also need to go to the city commission and get something, and here's the next time we can do that, we'll, they will consider that as part of the proposal. I don't think we're not sitting here saying the house has to be off the lot in 45 days. We're sitting here saying a reasonable proposal has to be made within 45 days, and I'm just saying in advance, and it's got to be fairly quick in terms of the solution to moving the house because we really do have. We, we, in fact, are incurring expenses. We're incurring interest expenses and design expenses and contractor expenses. We can't really wait a long time. No, appreciate that. Thanks, sir. So what I hear is voluntarily, or, I don't know, the procedure, and I, I, I would defer to council or others to ensure that, but what I hear you stating the owner is willing to do is to wait 30 days, which puts this sometime toward the end of July, I guess, as a, would that be for the request to potentially demolish at that point if there's not an offer, but it certainly gives us gives us and the citizens time to be able to see if there's an amicable solution. Right. What, what I'm proposing, though, Your Honor, is that the is that the permit be issued in due course, just as it would be anyway, and that probably is not going to happen because they haven't applied for the disconnection permits um, until the last week of this month. It sounds like probably it won't happen much before the end of the month if at all. And then there will be another 30-day voluntary period that we will not proceed to demolish. You know, that my clients, and I'm saying on the record, won't do. And I don't think you all need to take any actions to take the truth. I'm not sure what action you could take, considering it wasn't agenda anyway. But that's okay. We're, we're still uh, agreeing to that. Uh, and that's what my clients said they'll do, and they'll do it. Uh, and, and if you have any other questions, I'm happy to well, answer. For me, this is certainly good. It's very good news. <clears throat> I'm going to sit down. Thank you. There's <laughs> <laughs> nowhere to find it. So, so, Commission, I mean, you've heard what's going to happen at least for the next 30 to approximately 45 days. I'm just doing approximations here at this point. Um, and, and I've also heard a tremendous offer, which I think challenges all citizens who are interested in historic preservation to put their thinking caps on and see what might the solution might be. At least that's what I've heard here, that, that certainly through Mr. Cheek, that the owners are very willing to accept offers. Uh, and I'm assuming that would be to move or move parts of it or whatever. Um, 
My question is, what role do we, if any, play in this process moving forward? Is there someone that's, that's, that's uh, working with that? Do we have any role in that? Or is this between the homeowner and, I don't know what we do now. That's what I'm asking. Well, well certainly, Mr. Chief, Wiggins or Mr. Chief may want to have an answer, but Mr. Wiggins, why don't you take a shot at it? Well, I'd actually like to respond. To okay, mine. please, Mr. Chief. I, I, thank you, Commissioner. I don't think I explained that very well. And my, my clients uh, are, are private people, and they think this could be handled in a private matter without the involvement of the, of the government in it, and I don't see any reason it couldn't be. I'm not telling you what to do. If you want to contribute, you want to do something like that. We're not looking to make a deal with the city. We're expecting okay. someone from the private side to say, here's a proposal. Okay. And, and to make sure it's also very clear, this is to move the house. Yeah. You know, it's, not, it's not to buy the house. I, I much prefer that. I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you. Under our house moving permit process, uh, it, it does require a permit to move a house, and there is a uh, administration of those requirements with regard to the house move or building move, with regard to the you know, how it's moved down the street, the tree removals. Please don't touch an oak tree, George. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and all, all those types. There also is in the ordinance the uh, ability to come before the commission for a house move for if it's moved within the city. It does not require going before the commission if it's moved outside the city, but for another location in the city, our ordinance does require that the uh, city commission approve that. So that would be which is important information for people who may be desirous of coming up with some sort of a system. Correct. Which is why I wanted to kind of tie that around the commission meeting if there's something that we need to bring up to uh to so we ask an expeditious manner. Right. I'd like to the, any uh did they contact us and coordinate closely with us any proposal for the house move, how that would be done so that we could uh, carefully assist with that process. I do remember the time they said there was a house that was being moved in the middle of uh, that fell off the truck in the middle of the of the road. I do remember going home one day and not being able to get there for a house in the middle of the road. So <laughs> I am intrigued that if we move the house outside of the city, it doesn't yeah, require us. But it's, <laughs> you do it in. I think you got to unless you helicopter it out. Yeah, I'll I'll eventually take it out of the road. Just more of the idiosyncrasies of our ordinances, yeah. which we learn when we come to apply them. Commission, what is your will at this matter? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing an amicable solution potentially without any commission action, but that's certainly a call for it. I guess there is one kind of open question, and that is um, if the commission or if the city has any property that we would even consider allowing the house to be moved to. Because that's going, to, that's going to be an issue in an attempt to try to preserve the house. And um, I, I don't know what our inventory is, and I don't know what makes sense, and certainly wouldn't want to make any sort of commitment sitting here. But the question is, are we willing to even consider that possibility? I think people kind of need to know that so they know how much money they have to raise and what would have to be done. Well, I, I would speak. Kind of the way Tripp has said it, I mean, I would, I would certainly entertain any reasonable request at this point. I, okay. I don't know, you know, so we're open. I don't think we're we going to move it to Downtown Park Avenue. I don't think right. that's against some or rules or law, but, uh, but sure. I mean, I think that, yeah. you know, it might make a great Good. second addition to our clubhouse at the golf course. I don't know. Let's look at those things. So we're open. We're open. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I think this went very well. And we should all be happy with the fact that we've been able to come up with something that's a solution. Because it has been very hard to read the, not just the paper, but all the emails that have been very blaming. And it's been a it's been a, hard, a very hurtful thing for us and for everybody. So I'm glad we were able to come up with something. And I hope that everybody out there can kind of move forward with this and, and stop the blaming. And I think working on our process in the future is a good yes, idea. You know, because we really, I, it is yeah. a process here. We've all, the community and every one of us and the owners are a victim of the process that failed us. So we need to figure, and quite frankly, that process failed us because of the change in the economy and the times. We probably would have never run into a situation. This is a very unusual situation. 
and um, I'm glad that the owners are, are really trying to help, which I had gotten the impression they were anyway, so that's very encouraging. And if the city is also open to some sort of um, help in this situation, I think maybe now we just have to look to the community to say, is there something that it might be a great way to bring the community together to try and do something. And certainly, um, it helps us learn lessons about what we have to do to fix this ordinance. There are a lot of open issues that we have to have honest communication as a community. And that's, you know, relative to who puts houses and, and um, landmark properties on the register. And we need to think about that. Yeah, and we can take them off. off. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Commissioners, I would like to request that at our next meeting, if we have 30 minutes, I would like to put an agenda item that would at this point be probably an action item not requiring, dis I mean, requiring discussion but not decision that would uh, begin a process to review both our demolition as well as our historical ordinance. I, I'd like to be able to schedule that for the next meeting. I see three heads, four heads, uh, maybe five heads nodding to that. So our next meeting, we'd, we'd, we'd start the process to see if you know, so the process has some opportunities for improvement. And, and, it, and, it, and it didn't happen in 2011 or 2012. It happened in 06 and, and whenever those ordinances were done. And, and it's been tested. And like all good ordinances, they will be tested. And we will we will see what needs to be adjusted. I'd like to start that process next week. And, and I want our advisory boards to be intimately involved with that, too. That's why I, I, I don't want to take an immediate action. I just want us to start the discussion. So, so it's just for discussion, and then it may yeah. go back to the advisory and then board. I think, well, you know, you can put it on action items requiring for discussion. If everybody's agreement for that, what I, I mean, I don't think we're ready to make an ordinance. I don't think we're ready to adjust an ordinance. I think we're certainly ready to say that these things need to be reviewed. That's what I. That's how I feel, based on the dialogue of the last couple of weeks. Commissioner, I think as we get ready to review it, something that would be helpful to me personally would be if we can have staff actually review the outstanding. Um, ordinances that are available in cities like Coral Gables or St. Augustine, other cities that have the same respect for the <coughs> historic preservation and, and tell us maybe just a chart with some bullets that say what they're doing that and how our ordinance stacks up to that and so, so that we can benchmarking. That's so a we can kind of consider and, what and changes. We're not Coral Gables and we're not Charleston, but Absolutely. we certainly need to look at how other people do it. So makes sense for us. Commission, what is your intent? I know there are many citizens who wanted to come to speak with us about this matter. I don't know if you want to open the floor for public comment. Or not. I, that, but I, would I would like to, to hear. Say. I'd like to hear. Same from how the the rain place to go. They don't want to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but, but I, 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 let me do this. Uh, why don't we open the floor for public comment? If citizens want to speak about this matter with us, that's fine. If there's other matters that they want to speak to. Uh, I guess I'd like to get this issue so that we don't mix the public comments. Is there anybody here to speak to us about matters that are not this matter? <coughs> okay, great. So, so then, I mean, I'll still open the floor for public comment at that point. But, but uh, if any citizens want to speak to us about this matter at this point, uh, we're certainly welcome. I would ask you if you have more than one to line up and get a yellow card, please. That's our process. So, come on up and line up because we didn't bring our jammies tonight. So. Come on, come on, come on down, come on down. She waved at me three times, I just, come on down. Uh, Sally Flynn, 1400 Highland Road, and from the discussion that we, you all just had, I will change um, some of the things that I have written here. I, I am very much encouraged. However, it is true that no matter whether you did it just the way you thought you had to do it. Five of you did sit up there and in a six minute decision took away the um, Cape and House protection from the bulldozer. Uh, choices and decisions have consequences and I hope in the future whoever is sitting on the dais will think about the consequences of their vote before making a decision. Think how wonderful it would be if we still had the red brick Park Ave school building what history that would be today if we could show today's school children the building and kids went to school on Park Avenue. The Tiki Home on the Isle of Sicily, the Annie Russell House on Via Tuscany, and if some of you don't know these homes, it's because they were demolished. 
Each time we lose a piece of our heritage, we become less. If this continues, we will become nothing. I hate to give up, and I think there's a little bit of hope now that maybe we can save the 1885-year-old Cape and House, but we must not lose any more. To the future, I implore you to write an ordinance that has real teeth. Protect the homes that already are on the preservation list, and I implore homeowners to register their homes so that we don't become a city of McMansions or another Baldwin Park. And we need to have neighborhoods become designated historic areas as College Quarter and a piece of Virginia Heights has already done. Orwin Manor would be a perfect neighborhood to establish one. Losing the Cape and House will indeed be a travesty if it happens, but we must not let it happen again. But we must all get to work on all this immediately. Thank you. I'm Peggy Evans. I'm not a speaker, but I wanted to speak. If, if you could identify yourself, please. Okay. Your address. Okay. Your address. This good? Your address. Oh, 761 Virginia Drive, Winter Park. I live on the south side of Lake Virginia. My house is 37 years old. It's not on a historical registry. And I have many friends who live on two houses from, Bal from um, Windsor. Gorgeous homes over there. But people come to my house and they say, your house has charm and all this stuff. But anyway, I'm here to, because I have a letter for the mayor from Amy Jennings Evans. And Dr. Jennings, I grew up going to that house and it makes me want to cry thinking about how much fun we had. And this is a very good letter from Amy. She's in North Carolina taking her grandchildren and mine to camp. And truthfully, we didn't know all this was happening. <laughs> I don't know where we were. But I won't read this whole letter, but she just said what a terrible surprise and regret this was to find out about this house. And they, her parents purchased the home in 1949 from the Showalter family. And then, as a child, she remembers how proud her parents were to live in a home with such a historic past. Mother had a booklet of the history of the Capon family and how they were a founding family of Winter Park. My father, Winter Park's first dentist, held many holiday events at 520 North Interlochen. These events were attended by many of the town fathers including the Wenderweedles, Wards, Dickinsons, Hightowers, the Prices, Langdons, and my uncle, Governor Leroy Collins, to name a few. My parents owned the home from 1949 until 1995. My children, nieces, nephews, as well as their friends, have loved and shared many wonderful experiences and have many wonderful memories of the house. I have returned several times to see the old home and was invited to see the magnificent or significant renovations and capital improvements. We were happy to see the house had been restored and fully updated in a way that was true to the property's historic roots. A house home of such a historic past should not be destroyed. There was a reason that Winter Park placed the home on the city historic registry to preserve one of Winter Park's oldest and most noteworthy homes for future generations and to remember the heritage of Winter Park. So she's hoping I have to call her tonight. What am I going to say? I will say that you really try to do the best you could. But honestly, I wish something could be done because I just remember the how wonderful, and I love driving by it. I like how it looks. All these homes I go into are wonderful and great and magnificent, and they all seem alike. This house is not like every other house. And I hate to see those houses go, and I thank, thank you, you for whatever you can. I'm thank you. you. I would
would ask that public comment be limited to the voice so we can hear instead of the applause. I appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow. Um, I'm Shay Silver, and I live at 735 Pansy Avenue in uh, Winter Park. Um, uh, in the 1990s, uh, I took a little house that was uh, the original Grove house uh, that the supervisor lived in uh, when uh, the area was only groves. Of course, I don't think anybody here could ever remember the groves, but there were groves from uh, Denning and beyond all the way down to uh, uh, Rollins uh, at one time. And um, I had to add on to it under the thousand square feet to make it possible to live in it. But uh, I kept as many of the features uh, as were original to the house as I possibly could. I enjoyed doing that. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, and that's just, um, that's just what we do. Uh, here's my idea. Um, I think we should move the house. Um, I think we, we could move the house to any number of places, but you could move the house behind the Civic Center on Morris uh, Boulevard. Uh, 1792 in Denny. Um, there's three little lakes there, uh, Lake Rose and Lake Minston. You know, there's this thing called the Martin Luther King Park, Lake Island Park, whatever you think you want to call it. Uh, but let's just say you moved it there and you assumed uh, the same north-south um, attitude that presently exists uh, on the lake. Um, that would be good because you could use uh, this house as a part of the um, catering hall facilities that um, exist already in the, in the um, Civic Center. You could use it for meeting rooms. Um, it would serve a purpose. Um, and uh, so where is the money coming from? Well, let's think about that. That um, we have some money uh, that we could, um, well, we could look at the city's general fund. And if it's true that we do have 30 days, then those people that are interested over the next 30 days, uh, we could form a partnership with them monetarily. Uh, we could chip in or they could chip in. But the spirit of the thing is that the money would be paid back to the city. And this group could apply for a charitable tax free designation. And much like uh, Casa Feliz, as one of the commissioners uh, mentioned, um, it, could be, it could be an approach like that to uh, to financing the house uh, and, to, uh, and to moving it. Um, I love working with Lindsay and also the Winter Park Preservation uh, Society. Uh, I'm an interior designer and I also designed a park for uh, Winter Park. I designed the uh, Winter Park Racket Club at one time. So I think you'll find that a number of us who could even be um, consultants uh, could help uh, pull it together. Uh, we, we need some kind of leadership here and uh, I don't see any problem with the city offering uh, um, this leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Michael Spencer. Um, I live at 1509 Orange Avenue. Uh, I'm a construction project manager and certified general contractor with 18 years of commercial uh, project experience and a lead accredited professional. My wife and I recently renovated and restored this home at 1509 Orange. Um, had it placed on the registry here with the City of Winter Park. Um, actually won an award um, from the Florida Historic Preservation uh, Florida Trust. Um, it's our third home we've renovated. And thank you, Tom, for your comments about this property today. And I guess we're here for selfish reasons because we have poured our heart and soul into this house. And certainly don't want to see it get stripped of its designation later on because of the process. Um, frankly, it's more difficult to get a tree removal permit here than a demo permit, as evidenced if you rode by our house and saw the large tree on our garage not too long ago when a floral oak fell on it. Hopefully we'll be really rebuilding that soon. Um, so. There was a lot of great discussion here tonight, and I believe that you're on the track that I would hope you would be on, talking about the city of Coral Gables and their overall ordinance for demolition, not just on historic properties. I believe they have a six month waiting period. Um, and also, frankly, looking at other historic options as a larger group rather than just a voluntary um, one by one case, but larger districts. 
where there would be no discussion with banks or anybody else. Once it's designated, it's designated. And I would hope that I don't ever have to find that our home gets stripped of its designation in the future after everything we've put into it. Thank you. Thank you. Again, politely, please, if I could ask you to hold your applause on it for a Hi, my name is Betsy Owens. I'm executive director of the Casa Feliz Historic Home Museum, 656 Park Avenue North. The city of Winter Parks received a wake-up call. Whether or not the historic Capon House is reduced to rubble in the coming weeks, the realization that many of our most precious architectural resources are so vulnerable has rightly alarmed this entire community. If we're smart, we'll harness this concern to examine how, as a community, we can avoid being in this position again. About every 10 years, Winter Park, like many cities in Florida, commissions a historic resources survey. An independent consulting firm, in our case GAI, conducts a thorough inventory of the city and using objective criteria consistent with national trust standards, compiles a list of the most historically significant buildings in the city. The last survey, completed in 2001, designated 128 buildings as eligible for the National Register. Of those structures, only 16 are protected by the Winter Park of Historic Places. Theoretically, the remaining 112 could legal be, legally be demolished at any time based on a current or future owner's whim. Given that in the past two decades, I brought a prop, <laughs> One out of every eight houses in Winter Park has been demolished, more than twice the national average. This is a very real possibility. We need to preserve these homes because it's the right thing to do. It's our city's history that defines us, that makes us unique, that gives Winter Park a palpable sense of place absent in so many newer communities. For people who prefer to see things in economic terms, there is indisputable evidence that historic preservation increases our property values and brings shoppers, diners, and tourists to our city. There's no scenic boat tour in Windermere, and no one jockeys for restaurant tables in Uptown Altamont. <laughs> there are a number of options worthy of consideration, safeguards that work effectively in many other Florida cities, like St. Augustine, Sarasota, Jacksonville, St. Petersburg, and even New Smyrna that are subject to the same state laws governing property rights that Winter Park is. Casa Feliz applauds your pledge to take a comprehensive look at our entire historic preservation ordinance, which clearly is not doing the job it was intended to. At the very least, we need to consider how demolitions are handled in our city. Tools such as adding a review process to propose demolitions or imposing delays on demolitions of older buildings work well in communities around the state and would work well here in Winter Park. The Friends of Casa Feliz respectfully offer to assist in any way possible in this assessment process. Thank you. Thank you. Please, the drum beat. Well, I'm just trying to recall the I've said three times now to ask the audience to hold Mayor, Mayor Bradley and Commissioners. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. Much, much appreciated. Mayor Bradley, I believe you can identify you. yourself, so please. My name is John Kern, and Thanks. I'm on Roundelay Lane. Mayor Bradley, you were identified as saying in the Sentinel, quote, we have two very strong and conflicting ideas, historic preservation versus property rights. Actually, I think that statement would probably be more accurate if you said two very strong and conflicting ideas, zoning laws and property rights. All of our zoning laws affect property rights. So I guess my question to the board is why are the historic preservation laws second class zoning laws? Zoning laws define the type of community we want to live in and certainly one of the reasons many of us live in Winter Park as opposed to other communities is because of the history that this town has. While I have nothing against Windermere, that's really what Winter Park could become without a strong historic preservation law. And I'll, I'll finish with two cautions. 
The first caution is to SunTrust. Rightly or wrongly, they really have expended, uh, used up a lot of their goodwill in this community because of their actions. And I think that that's, uh, that's something they're going to have to rebuild. I, for one, would not choose to use SunTrust today. The second caution is to the commission. Rightly or wrongly, there's at least an impression that your decision rescinding the historic preservation designation was out of fear of litigation. And I think you need to uh, uh, be careful. That could be a, a very dangerous impression. Thank you. John Rogers, Jr., 1003 Temple Grove. Um, going to run the risk of not ever being invited back to Thanksgiving or Christmas say that uh, I think we ought to tear this house down soon and be done with it. Because I think we need a trumpet call to arms. I think we need a sacrificial lamb. I think we as a town need a lesson. I thought the Casa Feliz was going to be that lesson 12 or 13 years ago, and obviously it wasn't. Winter Park has got a culture and a values problem. We are halfway through the process of eating our seed corn, of trading our birthright for a bowl of soup, sending the girl next door off to become a Vegas whore. We have lost a thousand houses in 20 years, one in eight houses. Winter Park's government has long been captured by interests that do not have Winter Park's long-term identity and benefit in mind. What those interests have in mind is their own short-term gain. My question is, is the function of a government to work for the good of the majority of the citizens or for the financial benefit of a small influential minority? We have got a 30-day demolition waiting permit. Big whoop. We need a motivated, in fact a frantic, move towards mandatory historical preservation ordinances, complete with not only sticks, but significant carrots. We need creative, out-of-the-box thinking, and we need it, need it now. I sat here and listened to Mr. Leary earlier talking about a baseball stadium on Orange and Fairbanks, I don't even know what that's about, say, think about it from a bigger picture perspective. Amen, brother. Let us do so. I listened to someone talking about fast food on the avenue. How does this government not see the similarities between McDonald's and McMansions, and their ability to cheapen, to tawdrify, to make ordinary, to in fact, the word that I like to use is crapify this city's brand. Our brand, our brand is quality, history, scale, architecture, lakes, trees, brick streets, and beauty. What this boils down to is a unique sense of place. And in fact, what most would refer to as taste and class. Taste and class are separate from commerce, business, and money. They can be enhanced by commerce, business, and money, but taste and class are separate from commerce, business, and money. Sometimes, especially in the park, they are in fact opposed. You know, the Hippocratic Oath says, first do no harm. I think that some of the people who are sitting in these chairs an hour have sat in them before would do well to think on that. Thank you. I'm Linda Kuhlman. I'm president of the Winter Park Historical Association. And I really just have a quick comment to make. If as a community we take away nothing else from these past few weeks, it is that Winter Park cares deeply about its history. And so do many, many people who love our town. More than ever, it must be obvious that history is important here. In fact, heritage is at the heart of our community. It should be protected, financially supported, embraced and valued by our leaders. 
Sanford, Goldenrod, Oviedo, Okoy, and Maitland all had established history museums long before Winter Park, and most have stronger historic preservation ordinances. It is time for this city to play catch up. It is also an opportunity to come together and discuss what is important to this community without pitting development and historic interests against each other. Both are contributing and essential elements of, our, of a healthy community, and it is certainly true with ours. Um, as a representative of the Historical <laughs> Association, I am delighted to see that we are going to be revisiting this ordinance. And I ask that the Winter Park Historical Association be asked to the table for these discussions. Thank you. Blydenburg, 204 Genius Drive. Um, interesting times. Uh, on the uh, the brand for the, and, and on some of the uh, logos for the city of Winter Park, it says the city of culture and heritage. If we don't get this preservation thing right, you have to take the word heritage off the mission statement. I don't think you want to do that. My recommendation, in fact, would be to go the other way, <clears throat> that your, your message to your advisory boards be much stronger and simply say, preservation matters, get it right, now. They write the ordinances. It's not a, it really, and I, the gentleman who talked about zoning rights, there's no difference between a setback and preservation. They're both take, they both have something to do with property rights. You're defining what you want, what can be done to a piece of property in the city. Therefore, you can do it. You can do it with fast food. You can do it with historic preservation. We will preserve our homes for architectural reasons, for historic reasons, for all of those things. Um, the building we're in qualifies to be on the National Register of Historic Places. And I think it should, because it's a really wonderful building at the other end of the spectrum. And so preservation of our history, celebrating our history, means that you as a commission need to say, we are going to do this. Give Lindsay what she needs to go. She's been trying to do this forever. Let her write the ordinance, come back, and approve it. Get the input from all the folks that are here and approve it. It's real simple. All we do is do it. Thank you very much. I am a native Winter Parker. <laughs> In fact, I'm a fifth generation native Floridian. And I, I think where I'm coming from, and I just want to say, is yes, I love old houses and it is about our heritage. Um, but we need you as leaders of our community to help, help everyone else have the respect that we need for our heritage of Winter Park. And I think my biggest hope for today's meeting was that you would recognize and somehow reinstate the historic designation on the Capeman House and that the Pokornies would do the right thing, and that is let it stay as it was born and built by the begin, you know, the creators of our community. And to me, I know that sounds very I idealistic, but to me, that's the right thing, and I can just hope that maybe one day something, someone will choose to do the right thing. Hi there. Well, I'm Clardy Maluja. You've been reading about me on the board up here but I've never gotten a chance to, to tell you my side of this story. Isn't that odd? <laughs> Isn't that odd? Well, I'm the one that dedicated five years of my life to restoring 520 North Interlocking because I believed that by placing it on the historic registry that I would be protecting it for future generations of Winter Park residents. I believe that what has happened here is going to forever alter the quality of life in Winter Park. 
And I'm speaking as someone who's had lots of experience with SunTrust. And from a personal standpoint, you guys, I've got nothing to lose here. Okay, I got nothing else to lose. <coughs> The fact that I have stood in line for the opportunity to share my side of this issue speaks volumes about this commission and the power of the big banks and their bully attorneys and how they can manipulate the truth in the name of the almighty dollar. And my friends, they have absolutely manipulated the truth here. There is absolutely no question that SunTrust acted in bad faith by not informing me of the rescission hearing, for God's sake. They knew our case was in appeal. Yes, Mr. Leary, our case was in, a, in appeal. And it did matter. And they did not have the right to sell that property. It had a cloud on the title. SunTrust knew our case was in appeal. And they also knew that the results of that hearing would have been very different if I would have been invited. Secondly, SunTrust claimed that I submitted that application in bad faith with tactical reasons involving the foreclosure suit is a bold-faced lie. In fact, all the attorneys here would call that libel. Thirdly, when the historic designation was requested, I had every legal right in the world to request it and have it de designated. We actually were, for, we, we were contesting the foreclosure suit and we were prepare, preparing for a very large lawsuit against SunTrust for fraud and predatory lending. Ma'am, I'll grant you. I'll and I was certain at that point that we would win. But most importantly, SunTrust's only argument here was in placing the home on the registry devalued the property. Historic designation does not devalue a property. It is now proven, in fact, that it significantly increase, increases the value of the properties. I'm going to grant her another minute. Lady and, she, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that, that, that please. You have I hear what you're saying, yes, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the future of our beautiful city is absolutely in jeopardy. And the charm and the beauty of the Cape and Home has become the perfect symbol of a problem that is not going away. You know, yesterday my son and I were discussing the current owner's plans to tear down the house, and he thought for a moment and he said, Mama, what more could they possibly want? And for me, he really had said it all. Our historic properties bless us with the things that money can't buy. You're not going to find the charming energy of the Cayman home at the Parade of Homes. You can't build it, no matter how great your architect is. It's in the walls, it's in the wood, it's incredibly precious, and it cannot be replaced. Members of the commission, I beg you, from the depth of my own heart and my soul, please use every every avenue that you have available to you to protect the heart and the soul of this magnificent piece of Winter Park history. Protect it from the current onslaught of bankers and realtors and developers whose vision is clouded by their insensitivity and the dollar signs in their eyes. If you need some encouragement, take a quick peek at their work the monstrosities that are already taking the place of some of Winter Park's most cherished properties. You might want to ask yourself some serious questions. Like, what are you going to have when the Cape and House is gone? What are you going to have when our history's all gone? And as my son said, what more could you possibly want here? What are you destroying? Thank you.
Um, my name is Sandy Wombo. I live at 940 Old England Avenue. I just have a quick, quick few things to say. First of all, I want to thank y'all so much for putting this on the agenda and hopefully making the decision tonight. Um, somebody mentioned that it, uh, and oh, secondly, I want to, I hope that we can come to a happy ending with this. I really think we can. I think we're a very thoughtful group of people and smart and resourceful, and I think we'll figure it out. Um, and I agree with Clarity about the attorneys sometimes. They're very, I'm married to one, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> love you guys, and I love, you know, I know, I love when my husband gets in an argument, when his client gets in an argument, and it just goes on and on and on and on. It's just great for us. Um, so I just want you to remember that. They like to continue, they like to stir the pot. Okay, I want to set the record straight. Um, somebody mentioned the house was on market for 212 days. I called about the property soon after it was listed at $3.2 million, way above market value. I don't think Claudia said this. I'm not quite sure, but I believe she purchased it for around 2.4, 2.6 at the height of the bubble. This house went on the market when we were still in the recession at $3.2 million. So I called immediately and was told, I had my realtor call, because I'm not buying anything with the other realtor representing me too, no way. So I had my realtor call and we were immediately told that there was a buyer. This was in August of that year. September, SunTrust attorneys come before you and they claim that they want to revoke the historic designation because it uh, devalues the price of the property. Could, do I have your permission to have another minute? Yeah, go, 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 Let me just do that. Okay? Um, anyway, the point is, it did, it, they did make that point that it, it does devalue the property, but they didn't lower the price until November to 2.9 million, which is still out, out of sight. I asked them if it was negotiable. They said no. It stayed on the market. And in March, um, the Pornies family got it for two million. So I guess what I'm saying, I'm not upset with the Pornies. I think they didn't do anything wrong. They're smart. They're resourceful. I just think that I just want to set that straight. That that price was was absolutely inflated for a reason. And um, I'm very upset about it. And I hope we can figure out a happy ending. I'm sure you saw the pictures of the inside. Um, Clardy did an excellent job. It was beautiful. Thank you. subject if there's anybody else that wants to speak to Certainly. So I don't think you're speaking to the historic preservation piece. Is there anybody else that wants to speak to us about the historic preservation? If so, I'll call that to hold. I'll certainly give you your three minutes. Okay, I'm going to close the public comment, not say any further comments. Commissioners, anything else you'd add to our commentary? Okay, then I'm going to formally go into our public comment period. And if the clerk would add three minutes to, to our time, I would appreciate it. Feel free to comment to us on, on the new subject. Thank you. Um, I've been in Winter Park for a very long time myself. My um, family had a business. We opened it there in 1978 on Lee Road. So I appreciate, you know, the idea of uh, heritage and things like this. The property that I own is at 1531 Lee Road, and it is next to the Rutherford Project. I am not part of the project. I have it yet. And uh, I also, what I need <coughs> to do is I need to let you know that notice was sent that I was going to be annexed into the property. However, it was sent to a